So let's all take a deep breath and imagine we're in Disney. Hello everybody, Nikki Marr here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've all had a fabulous week and are ready for another fun ranking video. And this time we're gonna do something that we have never done before. That's right, today we are straying outside of the official Disney animated canon and we are going into the theme parks. As today, we are ranking some of my favorite Disney Parks characters of all time. Now, as you all are well aware, Disney has some amazing characters in their wheelhouse, but not all of them come from their Disney animated movies. There are actually some Disney characters that can only be seen in the Disney Parks. And so today we are gonna break it down and we're gonna talk about all of my favorite Disney Parks theme characters. If you are excited for today's video, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss magic from me. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Nikki Mara and I am a Disney content creator and if you like to hang out and talk about all things Disney, then feel free to subscribe down below and find me on all my other social medias at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. And if you recognize her, then you're a real one. <laughs> all right, well, I'm gonna keep the intro short today because we have a lot to discuss with these Disney Parks characters. So really quick, I'm gonna jump into some quick disclaimers and conditions for the list today. But if you wanna jump right into the ranking, then you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost for our disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company. I don't speak for the brand or the company and all of the opinions in this video are just my own. And secondly, I welcome any and all opinions surrounding these incredible Disney characters down in my comments. So if I happen to not rank a character that you really, really love from the Disney parks, make sure to leave them down in my comments down below so that way they get some representation. And also down in the comments, let me know which of these characters is your favorite. And as for the conditions today, these characters must come from a Disney park from anywhere around the world. They must be a character exclusive to the Disney park so they cannot be from a Disney animated film, and they can be a meet and greet character, a character found in an attraction, or featured in a land, a show, or a restaurant. Extinct Disney attractions will also count, and characters who are very similar to each other will be grouped together. And we will also be limiting today's list to 35 characters. And the reason that I have that limit on today's list is because I really want to dig in deep to these characters because I feel like they might not be as well known as a lot of the animated characters. And so I want to get into their stories and a lot of fun facts about them today. And so with all of those conditions and disclaimers out of the way, I believe we're ready to start ranking some Disney Parks characters. Oh yes, and really quick, I do want to hit some talking points with each of the characters. And so for each of the characters, we're going to be discussing who are they, and finally, which parks, attractions, or lands can they be seen in. Alrighty, it's time. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a snack and a drink, and let's rank my top 35 favorite Disney Parks characters. Ooh, gonna need some water for this one. Recognize this too. <laughs> All right, we are starting today's list all the way down at the bottom at number 35, who is Laguna Gator from Typhoon Lagoon. Now, I absolutely love this adorable little gator. However, I very rarely get to see him. I personally am not a huge water park fan. I'll typically go to the water parks like maybe once every 10 years. And so I really don't get to see him that often, but whenever I do, it is such a pleasure. Laguna Gator is the official, unofficial mascot of Typhoon Lagoon, and therefore can be found at the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando. And the story of Typhoon Lagoon is that it's a lagoon that has just had a typhoon go through it. Go figure. <laughs> and so you get to explore a ton of wreckage around the theme park. And the main character of this park is Laguna Gator. I love getting to see all of the little details that he has in the park. There are a couple statues of him and there's also his house which you can look into and explore. He's just super, super cute and a really great icon for the park. So yeah, that's why he's gonna go down at my list though is because I really don't get to see him that often considering I don't really visit the water parks. But with that, we're gonna move on up to number 34 on my list who is Harrison Hightower III from the Tower of Terror. Now, many of you may know that the Tower of Terror is primarily themed around the Twilight Zone, especially if you're familiar with the Orlando theme park. However, over in Tokyo Disney Sea, which is a theme park at the Tokyo Disneyland Resort, the Tower of Terror is themed around a brand new concept, which is the story of Harrison Hightower III. Harrison Hightower is a member of the secret association of the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, otherwise known as C. SEA. <laughs> and on one of his expeditions, he ended up stealing a cursed idol from some of the natives along the Congo, and he brought it back to his hotel, which is the Hightower Hotel. Well, the cursed idol didn't necessarily like what happened, and so now the hotel is cursed, and Harrison Hightower had to suffer the consequences of this curse. 
in the elevators. <laughs> now I really like this character. I think it is a great differentiation from the Twilight Zone theme. And I like that Tokyo Disney Sea has that sort of incorporation of the SEA. And fun fact about Harrison Hightower III is that his likeness is based off of famous Imagineer Joe Rohde. I feel like it's also important to mention I have not visited any of the overseas parks. I'm just a huge Disney fan, doesn't matter the park, so I have done quite extensive research on all of these parks, and not only just for this video, but just on my own time. I'm really cool. <laughs> but with that, we're gonna move on up to number 33 on my list, who is Albert the Monkey from Mystic Manor. Now, over in Hong Kong Disneyland, they don't necessarily have the Haunted Mansion, which is an iconic attraction here at the United States parks. Over in Hong Kong, they instead have what's called Mystic Manor, which is this magical, lighthearted take on a mysterious manor. And this attraction is primarily led by two different characters. One is Albert the Monkey, and the other is his owner, who we're gonna talk about in a few numbers. <laughs> But yes, Albert the monkey is absolutely adorable and quite mischievous. His backstory is that he was originally saved by his owner from a very large spider web and named Albert after his owner's uncle. Albert the monkey is quite mischievous and is the entire reason why the events of Mystic Manor the Ride take place but he is just absolutely adorable. And there are a lot of other hidden hints to him, such as at the Skipper Canteen restaurant over in the Magic Kingdom. But yes, this little monkey is so precious and cute, and we will be talking a little bit more about Mystic Manor very soon. But with that, we're gonna move on up to number 32 on my list, who is Trixie from The Country Bears. I love Trixie. I think she is such a funny and cute character. And interestingly enough, The Country Bears just got a brand new update. In case you didn't know, at the beginning of the summer, all of the bears were rehearsing a brand new show and they just opened it up. The Country Bears is a wonderful show that can be found at the Walt Disney World Resort in the Magic Kingdom and also in Tokyo Disneyland. But yes, very recently Trixie has gotten a brand new makeover and she now sings a brilliant cover of Try Anything from Zootopia with an iconic country twist. I love Trixie and I'm so excited to see this brand new show the next time that I'm at the parks. But with that, we're moving on up to number 31 on my list, who is Lord Henry Mystic from Mystic Manor. Now, once again, jumping back over to Hong Kong Disneyland in the Mystic Manor, Lord Henry Mystic is the owner of Mystic Manor. He is also a member of the Society of Adventurers and Explorers, or C, and his story is that he built his home at Mystic Point, rescued the adorable little Albert the monkey, and now fills his home with incredibly special treasures, some of which are quite magical, and others of which get Albert into trouble. <laughs> But yes, I love Lord Henry Mystic. I think he's just a wonderful addition to these characters. And I love that he helps expand the society C. I'm telling you, I could do a whole video just on the SEA. It is so cool. And there are so many hidden things to find out with the society. Oh, don't even get me started. <laughs> but with that, we're moving on up to number 30 on my list, who is Billy the Goat from Big Thunder Mountain. Now at Walt Disney World, Disneyland and Disneyland Paris, you can find this adorable little goat on Big Thunder Mountain. Billy is truly one of a kind considering his favorite snack, is dynamite. <laughs> he is so cute, but very prone to getting himself into trouble. And funnily enough, you can also see a cute little nod to him over on Jesse's Roundup Carousel over on Pixar Pier at Disneyland. And what is so cool about Billy the Goat is that the Disney Imagineers actually use him for what's called the goat trick. Now, what is the goat trick? Well, Imagineers discovered that when you're on a roller coaster, if something off in the distance catches your eye, you are a lot more likely to feel disoriented on the ride or that you're moving a lot faster than you actually are. And so Billy the Goat is meant to be that thing off to the side that catches your attention and makes the ride feel even faster than it actually is. So while there might not be a lot to his character necessarily, I do think he is a really cool trick and definitely one that works if he happens to catch your attention on the ride. But with that, we're moving on up to number 29 on my list, who is Henry, also from the Country Bear Jamboree. Now, as we have discussed, the Country Bear Jamboree is found at the Walt Disney World Resort and the Tokyo Disneyland Resort, but Henry is the leader of the gang. He is the main bear that you see announcing all of the others at the Country Bear Jamboree. He is so nice and so kind to every single one of his co-stars. And in the new version of the Country Bear Jamboree, 
he shares, you've got a friend in me with his friend, Sammy. Oh, I just love Henry so much. He's such a sweetheart. And I really enjoy a nice bear leading this entire gang. But with that, we'll move on up to number 28 on my list, who is Waldo C. Graphic from Muppet Vision 3D. Now, this is a character that is exclusive to the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. And Waldo C. Graphic has some interesting secrets up his sleeve. <laughs> Waldo C. Graphic is the spirit of 3D and is conjured by Dr. Bunsen, Honeydew, and Beaker. He joins our friend Bean for a lot of zany fun, and he is, yeah, just this really magical spirit. He's able to transform himself into a lot of different things, and overall he just seems like a very magical spirit. That is until the very end of the Muppet Vision 3D show when, spoiler alert, he reveals himself to actually be Mickey in disguise. This is such a fun surprise that you wouldn't necessarily expect to see in the Muppets attraction, but it is extremely welcome and helps Waldo become a lot more memorable from the Disney parks. But with that, we're moving on up to number 27 on my list, who is John from the Carousel of Progress. Now, the Carousel of Progress is also a Walt Disney World in Orlando exclusive. The Carousel of Progress is a rotating theater show that takes you on a journey throughout the 20th century and into the early 21st century. And you get to follow this family and see how all of their lives change over time. And our main character, John, who's the one you see pretty much throughout the entire show, is quite an interesting character. He gets into a little bit of trouble, but also has wonderful relationships with the rest of his family. In the first scene, we see Valentine's Day at the turn of the century. The next segment is the 4th of July in the 1920s. The next segment, my favorite one, is Halloween in the 1940s. And the final show segment is the 21st century at Christmas time. And yeah, while not necessarily one of my favorite attractions at the Magic Kingdom, it is really fun getting to see John interact with his wife, Sarah, and his two kids, Patty and James. Now, before we get into number 26, I do want to have a brief trigger warning for anybody who has submechanophobia. Submechanophobia is the fear of underwater animatronics. And so if you don't really like to see moving animatronics underwater, I would recommend skipping on to number 25. Up next, we're moving on up to number 26 on my list, who is the Silly Sea Serpent from the 20,000 League Submarine Voyage. Now, while the submarine voyage of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea has sadly become extinct, Distinct. This is one that many Disney fans, whether you got to experience it or not, definitely know about, as it used to be both in the Disneyland park and also over in the Magic Kingdom. In Disneyland, it is now themed to Finding Nemo, and over in Disney World, 20,000 Leagues actually used to occupy the space that is now occupied by The Little Mermaid. Oh, and speaking of, if you're in line for The Little Mermaid, make sure to look out in the rock work. You might see a hidden Nautilus. But as for the silly sea serpent, I absolutely love this character. In recordings of this ride, 20,000 Leagues, it is led up to believe that you are going to experience this truly terrifying sea creature, only to be encountered with a sea serpent whose eyes are going in every which direction and whose tongue is hanging out of his mouth. Oh my god, I absolutely love him. I think he is just absolutely adorable. And while I never got to see him in person, I am so glad that footage and pictures exist of him. Silly sea serpent, you are gone too soon, but never forgotten. <laughs> And with that, we're moving on up to number 25 on my list, who is Duffy the Disney Bear. Now, my friends here on YouTube from the United States might not know this character as well as from the overseas parks, as Duffy Bear is really popular over in Hong Kong, Shanghai, Tokyo, Disneyland Paris, the Alani Resort in Hawaii, and the Disney Cruise Line. But my guess is you've probably seen him once or twice, so let's talk about Duffy. Duffy is known as the Disney Bear. He originated when Mickey was set to travel across the country, and Minnie Mouse created Duffy so that way Mickey wouldn't feel as alone on his travels. <laughs> So cute, huh? And Mickey just so happened to name him Duffy because he found him in his duffel bag. And what I absolutely love about Duffy is he's so cute, but also he's got a lot of friends. Since Duffy was created back in 2002, they have truly expanded the Duffy and Friends lineup to include a lot of brand new friends. These friends include Shelly Mae, Gelatoni, Stella Lou, Cookie Ann, Ola Mel, Lena Bell, and Tippy Blue. <laughs> Duffy's a popular guy, he's got a lot of friends. But yes, while I love this entire lineup and think all of these characters are so, so cute, we gotta hand it to Duffy Bear for being a true icon of the Disney parks. But with that, we're moving on up to number 24 on my list, who is Uh-Oa from the extinct attraction, Tiki Room Under New Management. Now, 
Brief disclaimer, I was extremely terrified of the animatronic Uh-Oh -uh when I was little. I very much remember her making me cry and not want to go back into the tiki room for like a long time, but now I think she's so cool and I want to talk about her. <laughs> now Uh-Oh -uh -uh could previously be found in the tiki room, but now she actually has a brand new home at the Walt Disney World Resort, which we will get into in just a second. Now the Tiki Room of course is well known by many as an iconic Disney attraction, full of singing birds, singing flowers, and angry tiki gods. One of which is Aoa. Now Aoa wasn't in the original Tiki Room, she appeared in a revamp of the attraction called the Tiki Room Under New Management which starred Zazu and Iago. Now, this version of the attraction was not popular at all amongst guests, but Aoa, who is the tiki goddess of disaster, was this very intricate and animated animatronic who even had her own song, and she, as an animatronic, was very heavily praised by the general public. The storyline of Under New Management went that Iago wanted to revamp the tiki room and change it all up, and Aoa, hearing about this, was very displeased. And so she ended up punishing Iago and letting the tiki birds stay. And as of now, the tiki room has reverted back to its original state. Of course, an abridged show, but back to the original state without Under New Management. And so when Under New Management left, the animatronics of Zazu, Iago, and Aoa were all taken out. So while you might be thinking that Aoa is now extinct, not necessarily, as she has found a brand new home over at the Polynesian Resort at Disney World, as in the bar Trader Sam's Grog Grotto, on one of the back walls up above, you can actually see Aoa, who is now a static figure. This is the original animatronic figure. She is just static now. She doesn't move anymore. But as a really fun detail, there is actually a drink on the menu called the Aoa, uh and when you order it, a lot of the cast members behind the counter will start chanting Aoa, uh and if you happen to look up at her, her eyes will light up bright, and she will give you a little bit of her namesake and cause some disaster. <laughs> but with that, we're moving on up to number 23 on my list, who is the three-headed troll from Maelstrom. Now, Maelstrom was a ride that used to be in the Norway Pavilion at Epcot. It has since been replaced by the Frozen an attraction. However, there are still nods to the old attraction over in Anna and Elsa's Royal Summer House. If you happen to look at some of the tapestries up on the walls, you might recognize some familiar trolls. Now, the three-headed troll was in the attraction originally in the place where Elsa is in her Let It Go sequence. You would enter into this swamp-like area and the three-headed troll would appear and send you backwards over the waterfalls, which is why you actually go backwards in the Frozen ride. And yeah, I really miss the Maelstrom attraction, but I will say, I am very glad that it was replaced by a ride that I actually really love. I miss you three-headed trolls, but I will think about you every time I sing Let It Go. <laughs> and with that, we move on up to number 22 on my list, who is Teddy Barra from the Country Bear Jamboree. Now, Teddy Barra, you might recognize as the bear that comes down on her swing. She can be found at the Walt Disney World Resort and over at the Tokyo Disneyland Resort. And quite fitting, in the brand new version of the Country Bear Jamboree, she sings A Whole New World. Oh, I just think that's so cute, and I cannot wait to see her live her Princess Jasmine fantasy. Next, we're moving on up to number 21 on my list, who is Sunny Eclipse from Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe over in the Magic Kingdom at the Walt Disney World Resort. Now, Sunny Eclipse is perhaps one of the best singers on all of Disney property. <laughs> Sunny is an alien animatronic that can be found in the restaurant Cosmic Ray's Starlight Cafe, and as long as this restaurant is open, he should be up and performing. He is absolutely adorable, will serenade you through your entire meal, backed up by the lovely space angels. Next we move on up to number 20 on my list, who's a bit of a spooky one, who is Sally Shine from The Tower of Terror. Now, Sally Shine is a character that can be found in the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, but only at Disney's Hollywood Studios and the Walt Disney Studios Park. She used to be able to be seen in the Disney California Adventure version, but that one has since changed to Guardians of the Galaxy. Sally Shine is the child star that can be seen in the pre-show for the Tower of Terror. The story goes that she, along with her nanny and a few other guests, were in the elevators when the Twilight Zone opened. And so she, along with all of the other people in the elevator, now haunt the hotel. And what's actually quite fun about her is that she happens to be holding a hidden Mickey, as she has a Mickey doll that she takes with her into the elevator. And next we move on up to number 19 on my list, who is the abominable snowman from the Matterhorn, sometimes known as Harold. <laughs> now over at Disneyland in Anaheim, California, they have the Matterhorn attraction in the Disneyland park. And while Harold the Abominable Snowman used to be a static figure, 
he is no such thing anymore, as there was a revamp quite a few years ago that made Harold quite a scary animatronic. He moves quite fast, as does your ride vehicle, so as you're zooming through, you might just end up with an abominable snowman's face right in yours. <laughs> now I love Harold, I think he's truly an iconic character, and while I've only ridden the Matterhorn once, I definitely look forward to making it back over to California to see him again. But with that, we move on up to number 18 on my list, not straying too far from the mythical creature from a cold location. At number 18 is the Yeti from Everest. Now, Expedition Everest to the Legend of the Forbidden Mountain is a train ride through Everest, which ends with an unforgettable encounter with the Yeti of the Forbidden Mountain. Now, what is quite interesting about this Yeti is that he used to be a fully animated figure. As your ride vehicle would shoot underneath him, he would reach forward and lurch at you. However, as the ride was open for many years, the structure holding the Yeti became unstable with the amount that he was moving. And so he has since been put into a B mode, which is a static pose with a light flashing behind him to make it look like he's moving towards you. And he has since been nicknamed the Disco Yeti. A fun fact about this figure, but I really hope that one day in the future, Disney will make the investment so that way we can actually see him lurch at us once again. <laughs> but next we move on up to number 17 on my list, who is Red from Pirates of the Caribbean. Now Red used to be known as the Redhead. She was a part of a scene in Pirates that was particularly outdated. And so a few years ago, the scene was completely revamped and now we have a fully animated animatronic of Captain Red. She can be seen both at the Walt Disney World Resort and at the Disneyland Resort. And I love this character. She is very assertive and commands attention. And I love when Disney is able to revamp a character that we all know and love so that way many generations of the future can also experience them. But with that, we'll move on up to number 16 on my list, who is Mara from the Indiana Jones Adventure Ride over in Disneyland. Now, I just have to say, the Indiana Jones Adventure is probably one of my favorite rides of all time in the Disneyland Resort. I love this ride so much, and I haven't been to the California parks in a while, but my god, I miss this ride so much. And with the rumor that Indiana Jones is coming to the Animal Kingdom over in the dinosaur area, my hopes are high that we might be seeing Mara over in Orlando pretty soon. Now, Mara is a big scary deity that you see at the very beginning of the ride. We are warned not to look into their eyes, but as the ride vehicle starts, we ascend this hill right towards the giant face of Mara, and we can't help but look into their eyes, which starts the entire adventure. And I guess a lot of you watching on this channel could technically say that you have looked into the eyes of Mara. Get it? Nikki Mara? Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I love this ride, I love this character, and I love that all of the shenanigans of this ride happen because of this deity. And with that, we move on up to number 15, a very new favorite of mine, who is Larry the Armadillo from Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Now, I can't help but let out the biggest smile when I see this armadillo. I absolutely love him. Larry the Armadillo is very quiet, but quite mischievous. He is an eye patch wearing armadillo, and he is very known to borrow things that don't necessarily belong to him. <laughs> As along the ride, we see him grabbing a license plate, and we see him with an umbrella. But what I love more than anything about this character is his design. As he is a static figure, however, what's interesting about him is that his eyes are actually an old Imagineering trick. His pupils are set further back than the outline of his eye, and so it looks like as you go by him, his eye moves and his attention follows you. And so whenever you see him in the ride, what's really funny is that he's in the middle of his thievery, but it seems like he's just been caught. And so he is holding something and completely still and just watching you until you're out of sight. I don't know what it is about the armadillo. I just think he's so cute. I love Larry. I literally need like a full line of Larry merchandise because he he's just my new fixation and obsession. Oh my god, I, I love Larry more than life. <laughs> Next, we're moving on up to number 14 on my list who is Kibibi, Kiyume, Nakawa, and Zawadi, all from the Festival of the Lion King. Now, the Festival of the Lion King show can be seen at both the Walt Disney World Resort and at the Hong Kong Disneyland Resort. And this show is 
absolutely phenomenal. And these four characters lead the entire show. They are Kiyume, which means masculine and strong, Nakawa, which means good looking, Kibibi, which means princess, and Zawadi, which means the gift. In the show, each of the characters sing one of the iconic songs from The Lion King, as other performers dance and do different acrobatics and stunts. Kiyume sings Be Prepared, Kibibi and Nakawa sing Can You Feel the Love Tonight, and Zawadi ends the show with a heart-wrenching rendition of the circle of life. I love these characters, I love their dynamic, and it is truly a pleasure to hear them sing whenever I visit the Walt Disney World Resort. Next we move on up to number 13 on my list, who is Constance Hatchaway from The Haunted Mansion. Constance Hatchaway is also known as the Black Widow Bride. She is a bride ghost in The Haunted Mansion who has a few secrets. She can be found at the Walt Disney World Resort and the Disneyland Resort, and Constance Hatchway has had five husbands, and those husbands are Ambrose Harper, Frank Banks, the Marquis de Doom, Reginald Kane, and George Hightower. And what's funny is you might recognize the name Hightower as we have already talked about Henry Hightower III, and so it is believed that Henry and George are actually related. <laughs> now, Constance Hatchway is undoubtedly one of the creepiest parts of the Haunted Mansion, as she comes with some deadly secrets. We see the figure holding a bouquet of flowers, however when she lifts it up it very quickly becomes an axe. And so the not-so-secret part of this is that she has offed her husbands. <laughs> now a really creepy but somewhat really fun fact that makes the entire scene even creepier is that as you are going through the attic scene on the left hand side you will see Constance Hatchaway, but over on the right is another fun little scene that might seem kind of boring, but the more you think about it, the creepier it is. As there is a little table off to the side with five hat boxes. Hat boxes were old-fashioned boxes that top hats would come in. But what's interesting about those hat boxes is right behind the table is a hat stand with five hats on them. And so if you think about it, the hat boxes probably have something in them, but it's not hats. What could it be? <laughs> Yes, that's just one of the many theories that surrounds the Haunted Mansion, but it's one that is very creepy, but I love to talk about, especially when mentioning Constance Hatchaway. And next we move on up to number 12 on my list, who is the Navi Shaman of Songs from Navi River Journey. Now the Shaman of Songs is the big finale of the Navi River Journey, and let me tell you, she is such an incredible figure. When this ride opened, she was actually the most advanced audio animatronic Disney had ever built, and also the most expensive. And she sings this absolutely gorgeous song, which in English translates to, O beautiful forest, there are tears in the forest, wood sprites, we cry out calling, O Ewa, O Ewa, O Ewa. Connected as one, O Great Mother, Wood Sprites, we cry out calling, O Ewa, O Ewa, O Ewa. By the people's will, the forest will sing, Wood Sprites, we cry out calling, O Ewa, O Ewa, O Ewa. And for one of the most interesting facts about this figure is that whenever something goes wrong with the figure, there is actually a pre-planned B show for her. She is such a complex figure that whenever something malfunctions in her, she is lowered into the ground so that way cast members can work on her to fix her. And in her place will lower a screen that will project an animated version of the character. It's something I've never seen because the audio animatronic is usually working, but if you happen to see an animated version of her, just know that you're seeing something that a lot of people don't usually get to see. And with that, we move on up to number 11 on my list, who is Big Al from the Country Bear Jamboree. I love Big Al. He is an emotional basket case, and we gotta love this guy. He can be found at the Walt Disney World Resort and the Tokyo Disneyland Resort. And in the brand new version of the Country Bear Jamboree, he almost gets through Remember Me, the emotional song from Coco. But when he breaks down emotionally, we kind of got to give him credit because who doesn't cry during that song? <laughs> but yes, I love Big Al. I love his character design and he's just the sweetest little guy. And I cannot wait to hear his rendition of Remember Me. <laughs> but with that, friends, we've reached the top 10 on my list of favorite Disney Parks characters. If you have any ideas as to who is going to be on the remainder of the list, make sure to leave it down below. At number 10 on my list is a bit of a rare character. I wonder if you guys know who I mean. At number 10 is Divine from the Animal Kingdom. Now Divine is a play on the words the vine. She is a jungle forest-esque spirit 
who comes out and is a meet and greet character. She is a silent character, so she won't speak to you. However, she is technically a face character. She is this larger than life and imposing character on stilts. And she is full of greenery and luscious plants. And I love how she moves so delicately and gracefully. She can usually be seen at the very entrance of the Animal Kingdom Park, where right after you scan in with your tickets, there is a left path and a right path. I personally have seen her before going on the path to the right hand side. She's not always out and she is actually kind of a rare character. And you actually might want to keep a lookout in a lot of the bushes and shrubbery because you never know, you might see one of them moving and it might be divine. But with that, we move on up to number nine on my list, who is Melanie Ravenswood from Phantom Manor. Now, I have never been to the Disneyland Paris Resort, but I am dying to go, no pun intended, for one ride and one ride in particular, which is Phantom Manor. Melanie Ravenswood is the daughter of Henry Ravenswood, who is the owner of Phantom Manor. She is set to be married, however, very quickly finds out that her husband has passed away, and she is haunted by this weird, strange spirit, or this phantom that is in the house. And so as we go throughout Phantom Manor, we see her dealing with the years and years of struggle as she constantly has to relive that night of her wedding day. She is just such a tortured character and there is so much lore and depth that go into this character that is not enough for one video. I would definitely have to make a separate video just on the Phantom Manor, but I love the in-depth and intricate story that comes with Phantom Manor. Melody Ravenswood is such a deep character and oh, I just love her. And not straying too far from that path is number eight on my list, who is Henry Ravenswood, the father of Melanie Ravenswood. Now he can also be seen in the Phantom Manor. However, Henry Ravenswood has a little bit of a secret. He is actually the Phantom of Phantom Manor. So when you see this dark, evil animatronic that is larger than life, that is actually the father of Melanie Ravenswood. Again, the entire story of this ride is just so deep and complex. I really could do my own like full hour video just on this ride, but my gosh, this character is so scary scary and so cool and ugh, I cannot wait to get to the Disneyland Resort and to see this ride. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's something that I always have looking forward to in the future. <laughs> but with that, we move on up to number seven on my list. Let's move away from the spooky characters. At number seven is Chuby from Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. I love this adorable little bird. Chuby is so cute. Now, Chuby can currently be seen at the Walt Disney World Resort in Disney's Hollywood Studios theme park and also in the Disneyland Park. Chuby appears at the very beginning and the very end of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Chuby himself lives in the train station in Runamuck Park, and he is very well known to entertain guests. And interesting fact about Chuby, his name was originally going to be Chubby, spelled just like the English word. However, during one of the Imagineer meetings, his name was misspelled to have two U's and one B, and when they read it off as Chuby, they thought the name sounded a lot more endearing, and it stuck. And so now we have this adorable little bird with an even cuter name. God, I love Chuby. I can't help but smile so big every time I see him. And yeah, I absolutely love him. And with that, we're moving on up to number six on my list, who is Jose, Pierre, Michael, and Fritz from the Tiki Room. Now these four birds are the musical leaders of the Tiki Room. They all have their unique and distinct personalities that very easily feed off of one another and create an amazing dynamic. They each have their own interesting voices as well and great character designs. And I truly believe that they are absolute icons of Adventureland, as they can be seen in the Walt Disney World Resort, Disneyland, and also previously in the Tokyo Resort. With that, we've reached the top five. At number five on my list is the Orange Bird from Adventureland in the Magic Kingdom. Now the Orange Bird takes up residency at the Sunshine Tree Terrace, which is a quick service window that you might recognize as the home of the iconic Dole Whip. Yes, Orange Bird has become the official unofficial icon of Adventureland, as the Orange Bird is associated with the Orange Dole Whip. And this bird is so cute in design. I love seeing him every time I walk by, usually because that means I'm gonna get a Dole Whip. <laughs> but yeah, I just really love him, and he makes me smile whenever I see him. But with that, we're moving on up to number four on my list, who is an absolute Disney icon at number four 
is Figment from Journey Into Imagination with Figment. Now Figment is the icon of the Epcot park. Pretty much every time there is a festival over in Epcot, Figment is loud and proud front and center stage. He has so much merchandise and is on absolutely everything and I have no complaints because he is so cute. Figment can really only be seen at the Walt Disney World Resort in Epcot, but he is absolutely so cute. And he's quite a troublemaker on his ride, but you know, we love him for it. Now in his original appearance, he did appear with the Dreamfinder, who is his friend, but in an overlay of Journey into Imagination, Figment was removed and the Disney fans were not having it. And so Figment was restored to the ride and we have seen him ever since, flying alongside Dr. Nigel Channing. God, I love Figment. He is so cute and I absolutely love that he has become such an icon of Epcot Park. And with that, we're moving on to number three on my list, who are the hitchhiking ghosts from the Haunted Mansion. Now, these three ghosts are truly iconic. These three ghosts can be found in the Haunted Mansion, which means they can be found in the Walt Disney World Resort, the Disneyland Resort, and in Tokyo Disney. And they are three animatronic ghosts that appear at the very end of the ride to bid guests goodbye. We are warned at the very end to beware of hitchhiking ghosts right as they come into view. And very quickly, they start to cause a little bit of trouble and join us in our own doom buggies. What I love about them so much is that they're really based on the hitchhiking spirits lore, which come from stories of people driving at night and seeing a hitchhiker, so they pull over and roll down the window and no one's there. Very creepy, but very cool. And speaking of unnamed Disney characters, these three ghosts originally did not have names, but with a lot of fan persistence, they were officially named Phineas, Gus, and Ezra. Phineas being the middle height ghost, Gus being the shortest ghost, and Ezra being the tall, thin ghost. I love these three. It is a pleasure every time I see them. And I'm always told that a ghost is gonna follow me home and I keep hoping that it's one of them. <laughs> but with that, we're moving on up to number two on my list, another Haunted Mansion resident who is the Hatbox Ghost. Now the Hatbox Ghost is absolutely one of my favorite Disney characters of all time. He is so cool and the story behind him is even cooler. The Hatbox Ghost actually appeared in the opening of the Disneyland Haunted Mansion. He is a ghost that holds a hatbox in his hand and his face would disappear and appear in the hatbox. Unfortunately, over in Disneyland, the effect didn't work exactly the way they wanted it to, and so a few weeks into the ride's operation, this ghost was removed. He was gone for many, many, many years. However, back in the 2010s, it was announced that he would be returning to the Disneyland Resort. And just a couple years ago, it was also announced that he is in the Disney World version of this ride. And while many people aren't happy with his placement in the ride, specifically his location in the ride, I don't care. I love this character. I love seeing him. I think the effect is just jaw dropping. And I cannot say enough good about this character. And keep your eyes out on the horizons because there is something secret and special coming with the Hatbox Ghost on this channel perhaps in the future? But with that, we have reached number one on my list of iconic favorite Disney Parks characters. Have you possibly guessed who it is? Yes, at number one is Madame Leota from the Haunted Mansion. Now at this point, I think it goes without saying that the Haunted Mansion is my favorite ride on Disney property. I love the Haunted Mansion. The top three characters on this list are all from Haunted Mansion. And Madame Leota is no exception. This spirit is just iconic. We actually first see her in this attraction in the queue, as on the left-hand side, right before you walk in, there is a tombstone for Madame Leota. And if you look at her for long enough, the tombstone actually moves. You can see her blink and move her head around a little bit, and it's, it's so cool. But in the attraction itself, we enter Madame Leota's seance room, and we witness this crystal ball floating in midair. We hear an incantation, and as we move around the room, we notice that there is a disembodied head in the crystal ball, which is the head of Madame Leota. Now, what is so interesting about this character is that her face is that of an Imagineer named Leota Toombs. She originally worked on the Haunted Mansion and was instrumental in making a lot of the magic come to life. And so when it came to creating this character, they wanted to go with somebody who had a very unique look, and Leota Toombs happened to be their pick. However, her voice wasn't necessarily matching up to exactly what they wanted for the ride, and so they had another very famous Disney actress come in and do a voiceover for her, who is Eleanor Audley. So, next time you ride the Haunted Mansion, you might recognize the voice of Madame Leota 
as that of Maleficent and Lady Tremaine, but fear not for Leota Tomb's voice, for you actually still get to hear it on this ride, as at the very end you might see a little spirit right up above you as you're about to exit the ride. This little spirit is known as Little Leota, and also has the face of Madame Leota, but this time around, as she's bidding you farewell, this is actually the voice of Leota Toombs. And actually, over in Disneyland Paris, the role is performed by Una Lind with some additional French incantations thrown in. But yes, Madame Leota is such an iconic character. She was given a fleshed out backstory in the live action Haunted Mansion movie. And interestingly enough, over in the Memento Mori store right outside the Haunted Mansion, you can see a fully done portrait of her as she appeared in her living state. And one of my favorite character appearances of all time was at the Haunted Mansion over in Disneyland where Madame Leota appeared up on one of the high balconies and recited a full incantation. Oh, this one just gives me absolute chills. And so yeah, Madame Leota reaches number one on my list of favorite Disney Parks characters. And with that, friends, we have reached the end of my list of favorite Disney Parks characters. Thank you so much much for joining me today. I had so much fun talking about all of these wonderful Disney Parks characters. If you liked today's video, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss magic from me. And you can find me on my other social media platforms at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. And I'm also going to leave a link up above to my Disney Rankings playlist, which is a playlist full of every single Disney video that I have done where I rank characters and movies. I want to thank you guys so much for all of the love on these videos. It truly means the world to me. And as we approach 1,000 subscribers, I am so unbelievably grateful and so overwhelmed with the love that you guys have shown me, and I am so grateful, and I'm so excited to see what else we do on this channel in the future. So until next time, friends, stay magical, enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see y'all real soon.